Hello everybody and welcome to my channel and I'm glad you stopped in. Uh, hit the like button and please subscribe. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Well, this article here is kind of not very nice. Let me just put it that way. Climate change activist Matty Budd poured human feces and urine on a memorial for a World War II veteran claiming to be protesting against the use of private jets. The 21-year-old activist desecrated the memorial to Captain Sir Tom Moore, who was affectionately known by the people of the UK as Captain Tom. The World War II veteran had been celebrated for his philanthropy philanthropy as he raised large sums of money for the charity associated with the National Health Service NHS during the COVID pandemic ahead of his hundredth birthday. Captain Tom passed away in early 2021 after becoming a living legend. Many are confused about the climate change activist decision to desecrate Captain Tom's memorial as he is not known to have ever owned a private jet. Ne nonetheless, Bud attempted to connect him to her ranting about climate change. I was studying to become a doctor because I believed in taking care of people. If we believe that the NHS is important, if we believe in taking care of each other, if we believe that the NHS workers are doing essential work, why are forcing why are forcing our health care system into collapse? Why are we forcing our civilization into collapse? Why is basically no one taking the genocide of all humanity seriously, she complained. All of this is true. <clears throat> and the government won't even end UK private jets. Every time one takes off, it pours a bucket of S blank blank T and blood onto everything that Captain Tom stood for but added apparently ignorant of the fact that the person literally pouring human waste on a memorial to Captain Tom's memory was her a person who identified themselves as Austin Cox on Twitter replied to a post from N Private Jets UK claiming that he was the person who had gifted the memorial of Captain Tom and that he would be pursuing Maddie for vandalism. Oh, I should think somebody would. I am the person who gifted the memorial to Thessaly Meadow and would like to inform you that we will be pursuing Maddie for vandalism. She will work with the police to ensure that this is taken as far as possible, he tweeted. And UK private jet supporter pours human feces on Captain Tom's memorial. Maddie, 21, former medical student, said, Every time a private jet takes off, it pours a bucket of SH blank T and blood on everything Captain Tom stood for. So I can't understand her thinking. Is she sticking up for Captain Tom? Or why would she do such a terrible vandalism to his memorial? It don't make sense to me. Does it to you? Leave me a comment. There's just some people I do not understand. Their actions we don't understand. To desecrate a memorial of an awesome, awesome person. And he never owned a jet. I just don't get it. I really don't get it. Let me know if you do. All right, let's go on to, let's see if I can bring this one up. I hope everybody's having a great day, by the way. It is October the 8th of 2022. 
Time is going by. Can you believe next month is Turkey Day, Thanksgiving? And then there's Santa Claus coming along in a sleigh. Oh my. We've got to make these times happy. We've got to make them happy. Even down deep we know that we're not actually that happy. But you've got to ad lib as they, the actors and actresses call it ad lib. Be happy. Make happy. You know, the families will be getting together. That's the best blessing there could ever be. The best gift could ever be if the families can make it. If the winter does not get that bad, which I made a video that um, I go to, uh, oh, what's that weather place? Oh, shoot, I can't think of it right now. But they're usually spot on. And I check it every winter. And uh, they say our winter is going to be bad. 40 below zero. In some times, in some places. And that's not wind chill factor, folks. That is the temp. That is the temp. Well, let's see what I've got here now. Well, that didn't come up like it should have. What happened here? All right. Well, let's put this down. And we'll try this again. Now, this was uh, a newscast, but let's go this way. We'll go to this place article here that I chose and see if I can do it without messing anything up here. And uh, sometimes my computer, as you all know, doesn't do what I want it to do. Now this one is about new poll shows American voters hate anti-police rhetoric. According to a survey from Breitbart News, over 70% of voters would not support a candidate who would support policies that prevent law enforcers from effectively handling violent crimes. Now, I did another video yesterday somewhere about this. Uh, and this seems to be the same article. What did I do? Download two of them from different news channels? That's very possible. You got to be so careful. And that's where I come up with that video, Support the Police. Yes. All right, let's put that one down. I don't want that one then, because I've already done it. All right, so let's go to this one. I've got them lined up again, folks. I do my homework. <laughs> I like doing it. Oh, yes, the hurricane. The Floridians, country left without power after a hurricane. And this was uh, late Tuesday night after Hurricane Ian ravaged the western part of the island. Cuba's electrical grid collapsed, leaving the country's population of 11 million people entirely without power. Lanzio Gura. G-U-E-R-R-A, Garula, a technical director of the Electric Union of Cuba, said the storm caused a failure in the national electric system and vowed that the union would work through the night to restore power. But by Thursday, most of the country was still without power. Angry Cubans in Havana and other cities took to the streets to protest the lack of of power banging pots and pans and demanding electrical service. Well, that is a big job to restore to millions of people. And I'm sure that electrical service men were working their hearts out to get the job done. You got when something like a hurricane emergency situation arises, you got to find patience because don't doubt that the workers aren't there because they are but to restore to a million people 
The day before, the electrical union said it had restored service to some areas, but said getting the power completely restored would take much longer. Well, the grid collapsed. What do they expect? And I know that they're upset and, and they've lost everything, and but you just got to dig down deep and find some patience for these workers that try to restore the power. In Havana, a group of protesters, mostly women, chanted, turn on the power, while blocking Calzada del Cerro, one of the city's busiest streets. Once the crowd started gaining attention, the lights in the area suddenly came back on. So the workers were working themselves to get it going. But as one protester died out, another quickly took its place. Well, yes protesters they need to be heard but they also have got to dig down deep for patience in such a catastrophe like a hurricane and the grid collapsing don't you think or am I wrong here independent news outlets reported protesters on the streets in the Havana towns of Gowana Bacoa and La Palma as well as in the towns of Ayesterian and 19 de Mayo. I know I'm not pronouncing these words correctly. You know me and my words. I'm not real cool uh, on some pronunciations, really. And some I get and I go, wow, I did that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Naturally, the C Cuban reg regime response to the protest was deploy a heavy police presence was squeezing off internet access to prevent word of the protest from spreading online. On Thursday, NetBlock, the internet observatory that tracks network shutdowns, tweeted that there had been a near total collapse of internet traffic in Cuba as the Cuban regime tried to limit the free flow of information to quell the riots. I take that to quiet them down, quell, you know. You've got to find patience. We know you're upset. You've lost everything. You just can't get by with not any uh, electricity, no way to cook. But you've got to find patience in these terrible tragedies. Friday, the Wall Street Journal reported that the Cuban regime has requested emergency assistance from the Biden administration in the aftermath of the hurricane. That was just something terrible. Those hurricanes are just horrific. The loss of lives, loss of possessions, loss of homes. I can't imagine living in an area like that. I just can't imagine. According to the journal, the Biden administration was considering the request provided the Cuban regime prioritize sanitation, hospitals, water pumping facilities, and the other critical infrastructures. I mean, you, people, you got to have patience. Everybody's hurting in a situation like that. I, I don't understand taking to the streets and causing more chaos. That doesn't pay. That doesn't restore anything or fix anything that you're qualming about or quarreling about. or You know, the workers work as fast as they can. When something like this happens, and when a grid collapses, that makes everything a hundred times worse. You've got to find patience. I know I'm a very impatient person. Yes, I am. I'm guilty of it. And I have to dig down deep to find patience. You just got to find patience. Well... Let's go down here. Where did I get that one from now? Let's go to this one here. And people just keep praying that our country will see an upbeat swing soon. But as things keep getting worse all over the world, can we have patience? Slim to none. You got to dig down deep. Deep in your soul, you've got to have patience. 
Biden brags about thanking Coast Guard rescue swimmer. He's firing him, but he's still thanking him. President Joe Biden bragged about calling to thank a Coast Guard rescue swimmer for saving lives during a Hurricane Ion. The only problem is the Biden administration is firing the rescue swimmer over not complying with a vaccine mandate. Biden called aviation survival technician second class Zach Lowich on Friday to thank him for his actions in response to the hurricane. I told him how proud of him I was, thanked him for all the work he and his Coasties are doing to save lives, the President said regarding the call. The White House publicized the call in a press release, writing that Biden thanked Lowich and Lieutenant Commander Christopher Hooper for the heroic uh, work that they and their Coast Guard colleagues have performed during search and rescue operations in response to Hurricane Ian. The President thanked them for saving lives and asking for a report on the work that continues to rescue Flori Floridians. He also asked if they needed any additional support that he can provide to accelerate successful rescues. They indicated they have gotten what they need to execute their vital mission. The press release continued. Despite the president bragging about thanking Lowich, the rescue swimmer is going to be discharged from the Coast Guard 30 to 60 days because of Biden's vaccine mandate that requires all members of the U.S. Armed Forces to be fully vaccinated, according to a statement from Lowich to Brit Bart News on Saturday. And I just did a video on that last night. Yes, they're being punished for not taking the jab. That should be their choice. Their choice, they chose to serve, to protect our country. Now, if they don't want to take the jab, they shouldn't be forced to. I just don't understand that part of it. Despite Biden thanking Lowich for saving people's lives, Lowich is due to be kicked out of the Coast Guard. <clears throat> Excuse me in 30 to 60 days due to Biden's own mandate that all members of the United States Armed Forces be fully vaccinated. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still fighting that cold, but I'm good to go. Uh, Lloyd told uh, Brett Bart's news on Saturday. The Coast Guard member has submitted a request for religious accommodation to the mandate and also requested an appeal but both were denied, Lowich revealed. I think that's sad. After he, he worked and gave up his life to save those people. Now his life could have been gone. His life could have been destroyed. He could have lost his life going through that hurricane and helping these people save their lives. I... I Please leave me a comment, like I said in the video uh, that I made last night. This don't make sense to me. That's their choice if they don't want that shot. They should not be ordered to take it. If I had asked any of the people I saved yesterday, if they wanted to come with me even though I am unvaccinated, every single one of them would have said yes, he said. During his her heroic rescue efforts, Lowich personally pulled a disabled woman and her husband, who had been trapped in their bedroom. There was a couch stuck in the doorway, so he kicked through a wall to get to them. After he freed the couple, Lowich went back into the house to retrieve her wheelchair and secure it to his body. Lowich was then hoisted up by the Coast Guard helicopter. He also rescued multiple cats and dogs. Commenting on his call with Biden, Lowich said that he did not want to mention his pending discharge with his commander-in-chief and ruin the conversation. It just sucks that he thanked me, yet the vaccine mandate is what's kicking me out, Lowich said. I just love my job 
and I'm really good at it. It sucks. I feel like this is the job that I was born to do. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis gave a press conference on Saturday about the effects of Hurricane Ian and relief efforts. Bless that young man. That's all I've got to say is God bless that young man. Bless him. Well, I'll be back. God bless you and your blessing. Pray for that young man. Be back later.